Hey, everybody. It's Durf and Dylan with On and Off the Field. Hee! It's May 26th, 2020. Yeah. Sorry, my speaker was in the way, so I had to do the, the head lean there. <laughs> it's the uh, day after Memorial Day. So we still, since we didn't have our apps, uh, an episode yesterday, still want to make sure we get our shout out for Memorial Day. And I hope everyone, you know, mm-hmm. enjoyed their weekend, but really spent it the way it's meant to be spent, remembering those who fought and died for our country and all the wars, keeping our freedom preserved. That's what it is all about. And uh, it's a really a, a great holiday. I guess we call it a holiday, but really is just a great day and memorial day should be every day it should be p those are people that should be thanked every day of your life should be uh always remembered so here we are one day after i am sunburnt to all living hell i have blisters um this is if you're watching this from youtube you will see, i raised my camera up a bit uh so you don't you're not staring at my chest because i'm not wearing a shirt because i can't <laughs> yeah. blisters on the shoulders blisters on the neck it's 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 a rough scene but uh you can still go to youtube and watch this if you want if you're not already watching it from youtube so derf where else can they find on and off the field they can find on off the field on instagram facebook and twitter along with youtube and if you subscribe to our youtube channel you will get uncut episodes of each week's podcast and other great content coming soon. If you want to find out more about on and off the field, head on to our overthrow website at on and off the field.com where you can find about the guests, the the show in general, any charities we do, any, um, any charities we do. Um, and speaking of charities, if you we're still doing our feeding America fundraising page. Um, I don't think we've had any movement in the last week or so, um, but we're still trying to get to our goal. <laughs> I know we're going to be able to do it here. Uh, we'll get there. I know we will. Um, besides following us on all of our Instagram, all of our social media pages and our website, uh, make sure to follow us on the RTF sports network uh, Facebook page and their website, rtsportsnetwork.com, as well as check out any of the other shows that are on there and make sure to vote for show of the month. There's a lot of great shows on that on the RTF Sports Network. Um, you can check out On and Off the Field from th- on Thursdays from 3 to 4, and then again uh, Thursday night from 7.30 to 8.30 live on Facebook. That's the one you don't want to miss. No, don't want to miss that one. Live show. Live show is always a good time. We always oh, have yeah. fun. Love interacting with people during the show. It's a lot of fun. But yeah, that's yeah, that's everything. It's our usual spiel. Just got to get all that out there. Make sure a little bit of our calls to actions. Make sure you like everything. Make sure you subscribe to everything. Make sure you share everything. Yep. We need oh, you. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that the old, is that the old uh, slogan there for... The army or something? Oh, Uncle Sam. Yeah, the old Uncle oh, Sam poster. We should we do need. that. We should make our own poster that says, we need you to share our content. That's what we need. There you go. And put our faces <laughs> on it. <laughs> All right, let's get the, the show started here. Uh, we're actually starting sooner than normal, so this is it's unlike us. Wow, we're really, really <laughs> moving along already. But this is kind of a new segment we have going here. Uh, this segment is going to be called Moran Talks About Morons. At least this is the segment name right now. It could it's subject to change, but that's what I that's what we came up with on the spot. It really got me thinking after last week after we ripped a, after I got to rip a rip apart Chris Sims for a little while. Uh, this is basically now just me ripping apart more people. So we came up with a segment name for it. Moran Talks About Morons, and boy oh boy do we have a lot of morons this week. Uh, so I, I, at first I was just going to talk about one specific topic, but then something else came out today that infuriated me once again. So I threw it all under one umbrella and I'm calling it just the idiots in sports media or the morons in the national sports media. Here's the problem. The one that came out today was, uh, Devante Freeman 
responded to the people that said he was going to retire. The initial report came from Ian Rappaport. I think if I said his name correctly. Yep. Famous guy. What does he do? NBC or something? NFL Network? Uh, NFL Network. Famous guy. Mm -hmm. And he's normally pretty on top of his stuff. He came out and said, if Devontae Freeman doesn't get a contract this season, doesn't start the season with contract, he's going to retire. Not like take the season off. No, he said retire. His words, it was a report, not a rumor, a report that he was going to retire. That's a that's a bold statement. And then yeah. Freeman comes out today and says, you're full of shit. And uh, he says, you know, he was mad. Mm-hmm. His, he came out with a tweet. He deleted it, but it was still a thing that happened. He said, mm-hmm. you know, the media's full of S saying he said, go F yourself. And it was, he was heated. He says he's got 10 more years in his legs. So where does this report come? It's just another false report that had uh-huh. no meat to it, that a player came out and said, that's trash. All right. Number two, all this LeBron stuff has to stop. <laughs> this has to stop. I oh, am. Yeah. I am done. So I, I I have three things, three examples, and three sort of th- like two and a half names. First one, the first one that really came out was an unnamed NFL scout said LeBron would have been a top 10 all-time player. All-time player. Not like all-time tight end, not, not, not even that. All-time player in the league, LeBron James. Because this all came about because LeBron said – During the NBA strike, he was trained to be an NFL player and blah, blah, blah. He has like this high school tape that looks impressive because he was massive and everyone else was like these skinny white kids. And he was a (laughs) six foot five black guy. Like, obviously, he's going to dominate in his high school tape. That's not relevant. But yes, unnamed NFL scout, top 10 player of all time. Next on the list, Bucky Brooks from the NFL Network says LeBron would have been the best tight end ever in the league. And he goes on to explain how he has the same measurables as people like Tony Gonzalez and Jimmy Graham and all the very top tight ends that we've seen in this league forever. I'm not gonna I can't name all of them that he said, but those were like two top ones. Just because you're the same size does not mean anything. I can go to seventh round tight ends that don't make teams that have the same measurables as Tony Gonzalez, but guess what? They can't catch, they can't block, and they can't run routes. The size does not matter. Number three, Doc Rivers, head coach in the NBA, I believe. Mm-hmm. If I, I'm pretty sure, Doc Rivers, just just straight up. I don't know if he was drunk. I don't know if like he. I don't know if someone just got this when he was at the bar. I don't know when he said this. He said he would have been the best of all time. Just 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 straight up. Yeah, he would have been the best NFL player of all time if he played in the football league. <laughs> you don't say oh. that. You don't. That's not a thing that should come out of your mouth. A guy who's never taken a snap in the NFL. Oh, he, didn't, he didn't even play in college. You cannot say he would have been the best of all time with absolutely zero tape except him beating five foot at best ten white guys in high school. Just stop. I'm done with it. <sighs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh. And that's and that's me yelling at uh, yelling at morons. It's basically me just being able to get stuff off my chest. That's what this is all yeah. about. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm done. All right. Well, we do have some XFL news today. We can officially officially lay the XFL to rest. Um, in bankruptcy court. Minsk man said that he will not try to buy back the XFL, virtually stating that the XFL is forever dead. Enter has... sound effect of sad trombone. That or taps. <laughs> yeah, that too. That will work. <laughs> oh, but it's, I, it's, it's. I think it's sad to see that they they had a good run this year. They really put it together. Like we th- really thought everything was going to go well. Obviously, we didn't all expect this to, this pandemic to happen. But I think that was that was definitely I think the nail in the coffin for Vince McMahon to be like, nope, 
I'm going to stick to what I know how to do best and stick to my wrestling entertainment and all that fun stuff. And we'll leave the football to the, to the other guys. I mean, it's just when you, it's two strikes you're out in this case, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> and I think when a global pandemic shuts down your second attempt, it might be a sign mm-hmm. Like, okay, yeah, it's just, it's just not meant to be. I'm good. Like, whatever. I'll just move on now. I, I would like to think that was his all telling sign. And then mm-hmm. I don't know if it was really an issue or if this was just McMahon trying to really put that nail in deep into that coffin, but the whole suing Oliver Luck and firing mm-hmm. everything, like, just the dramatic portion of everything that happened when the right. XFL shut down. I don't know if that was him just saying, like, yes, I'm going to make sure this doesn't come back. And now that him stating mm-hmm. that he's not going to buy it back, it's over. I have to go through all of our social media accounts and everything to take XFL out of the name, <laughs> go delete my <laughs> XFL blogs, and just delete any trace of the XFL because I don't think we're going to be talking about it for a very, very long time. Make it disappear. <laughs> yeah. It's unfortunate. I enjoyed it. Yeah. Maybe another legal come around. Who knows? Maybe. Some rando will come up and buy the XFL and give it a third try. But I, yeah. I don't think that's going to happen. No. But that's really all we have. Um, no more really NFL news. It's been pretty quiet on the front of actual NFL news. Um, pretty much covered NFL news in my rant for the most part between LeBron James and, <laughs> and Devonta Freeman. But, hey, the Seahawks signed Carlos Hyde. There's your NFL yeah. news. Oh, Boom. and we have... The Jets signing Joe Flacco. Oh, that's right. Yeah, there you go. I mean, not that that's a lot of, uh, that's not, not, that, not that it's big news, but it's still technically yeah. NFL news. I mean, it's not anything you have to dive into. Right. No. <laughs> hey, signed. So the Jets on. and Joe Flacco. Let's let's look at this from a cap space perspective. Uh, well, what does this really mean for Sam Darnold? Is Joe Flacco ready to start? No, I'm not. We're not no. doing that no. here on out and off the field. <laughs> He got signed for 1.5 mil and he'll do nothing. So, mm-hmm. but as you are here, you have read the title of this episode at least. That means you know that this is our NFC East episode, continuing our divisional breakdown series. Uh, we're on, this is our fourth team, I believe, that we've done. So we're over halfway. And the NFC East, consisting of the Cowboys, the Giants, the Eagles, and the Redskins, we have four guests tonight to cover all of those people. This is going to be a lit episode. And we already have three booked for Thursday's live show as well. So we are ready to roll with the NFC East. This is going to be a blast. So let's just, we'll just get right started into it. Our first guest is going to be a man that I hold dear to my heart. It's because I was on his show a while back. He is the co-host of Just for Clicks with with Michael Buckheister. It's Michael LeBlanc. What's going on, fellas? Hey. What is up? You know, we're just, we're just glad to have you on. Dollar. Another day, another dollar. Oh, well, I'm not making any dollars off of this personally. But, yeah, it's another <laughs> day, though. <laughs> Maybe someday. Yeah, just like Dylan said, I'm the co-host for Just for Clicks podcast. You can catch our show Sunday through Thursday, 9.30 Eastern Standard Time, 8.30 Central Standard Time, and 6.30 if you're living on the West Coast. Thanks for having me, guys. Got murder hornets over there. Yeah, uh, yeah. We're there in the (laughs) pre-show. I think he left, though. Oh, that's good. Oh, did he? All right, that's good. <laughs> so at least he's not going to sting me and give me the coronavirus. So we're all good. There we go. Yeah. We're glad you're here and you weren't e- eaten by a murder hornet. So <laughs> <laughs> we're going to be talking cowboys with you. This is going to be uh, this is going to be great because I think we're all on the same page with the cowboys. Yeah, I think so. Um, as long as they've got Dak Prescott at the helm. They're uh, they're wasting a lot of young men's talents. What's up, y'all? Dylan from on and off the field. Just got to take a quick commercial break from the show. Be right back. Thanks, and keep on doing you. 
<laughs> oh, careers. leave definitely. it to good old Jerry Jones to do that, though, right? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I feel like it's if you were to look back at last year, um, it definitely seems like the Cowboys had something going. They had the talent there. You've seen the games that they were winning, but obviously they couldn't beat. A, it seemed like they couldn't beat a team over five hundred. Nope. So I would say it seemed like they did, did not meet expectations from last for last season. Did they do as well as you expected, or was it kind of the same thing as like well, a lot of the people thought, and they did worse? No, I mean I th- I thought so. This year, I think the Cowboys are going to go eight and eight, uh, mm-hmm. seven and nine again. Um, last year, I didn't expect anything great from them. Um, now, I do expect our defense to be a lot better this season. Um, Alden Smith, um, he hasn't played football in quite a while, so he's pretty fresh. Mm-hmm. Um, if he can come out and be the player that he was in San Francisco, then I think he's going to be a monster. Randy Gregory, he's proven every time he gets reinstated into the league that he is a force to be reckoned with. So he's been reinstated. Um, you know, I'm, I don't know about Tank Johnson. I don't know about him. Mm-hmm. Uh, we Ever since we signed him to that big deal, um, he's just been flat, and he hasn't really produced. Uh, now, granted, he had a shoulder injury. He had C- or, uh, surgery over the offseason, so we'll, sh- we'll see. Um, there was another – we got Gerald McCoy. I am, I am happy about it. I'm excited about that, really. Um, Gerald McCoy is – a beast of a defensive mm-hmm. lineman. So I, I'm, I'm curious to see if, you know, if lined up opposite of tank Johnson, if he's going to be able, if that's going to free up Johnson too, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So we'll see, but it really doesn't matter because on the, on the offensive side of the ball, you know, like you had said, we couldn't, we couldn't beat teams that were over 500 last season. Mm-hmm. Dak is, Oh, and eight. He was zero and eight last season against teams, playoff teams. Yeah. So you know, with with that being said, I don't see, especially now that we're not going to have an off season, right? Mm-hmm. We're not going to have the normal off season and the mini camps and the OTAs. We're not going to have all that for Dak Prescott to really grasp Mike McCarthy's um, Mike McCarthy's system. And we all know Mike McCarthy is not he, his system is not a scrambling running around quarterback. His right. is a drop back, sit in the pocket and throw the ball. Um that's that's Mike McCarthy's system. That's what he mm-hmm. did with Favre. That's what he did with Aaron Rodgers also. So, you know, if, if you want my honest opinion, come week 3, week 4, if Dak Prescott doesn't sign a long-term deal and he signs a franchise tag, Andy Dalton will be starting week 3 or week 4. Yeah, yeah, I've heard that opinion from your show a couple times. I know that's with with your other uh, the other Michael on the show. I know that's a that's a pretty thing you both are agreeing on. Is Andy Dalton will at least play at some point this season, even if it's not week three, week four. He will definitely probably be in there. Yeah, um, for sure. Based off what I heard, but other than acquiring Andy Dalton, and you did a, talk about you know acquiring a couple other talents throughout the off season. They had a pretty interesting draft as well, but. I like to talk about losses. Uh, is that's where I always go to with some team, at least with my Seahawks. I always talk about losses. You can see who you gain, but losing pieces like Cameron Fleming, Byron Jones, a Jeff Heath, Travis Frederick going into retirement. It's a lot of things dropping off, and two of them being from that offensive line. Where when you said best offensive line in the league, you said Cowboys. Most people would say Cowboys, mm-hmm. and now I'm losing two of those pieces, especially the center. That's a that's a tough loss. So I know you, then you said Mike McCarthy comes in as well. That's another acquisition. But all these new pieces, it's it's tough to throw all this in here without a regular off season. I feel like that plays into the eight and eight, seven and the nine realm. You're almost staring down the barrel of it. Yeah, for sure. I mean, that's that's definitely that's it's probably like one of the biggest factors, right? So you got all these new pieces that's got to learn a. a a new system under McCarthy and you're not going to have that. So I do think that it attributes to a lot of being, you know, them going seven and nine, eight and eight, you know, it's mm-hmm. like Tom Brady going to the bucks. I don't think, I, I think 
Tom Brady has a decent season, but he's not going to be what he was in the Patriots. You know what I mean? And that right. goes with having I think a lot of I think a lot of teams around the NFL are gonna have that same thing. So maybe it'll be a level playing field, I guess you could say. But I think Dak has regressed almost every year since his rookie year. You know, he had Tony Romo on the sideline coaching him up, like, hey, if this happens, do this. If that happens, do this. Mm-hmm. Like, hey, you gotta do that. You know what I mean? And it really showed his rookie season when Romo was out there. And then his sophomore season, he kind of he kind of slumped. Dak, Dak Prescott slumped his sophomore season. And he didn't have Romo in his ear. You know what I mean? He had the clapper. Right. And uh, what the <laughs> hell is our offensive coordinator? Um, Linehan. So, which is uh, horrible. I am happy that the Giants got uh, Jason Garrett, though. So they'll be super predictable. <laughs> <laughs> that I, I thought that was one of the the oddest of acquisitions was Ga- Garrett staying in the division, going to the Giants. I thought that was fun. <laughs> For sure, it, it'll be nice because the Giants will be predictable, just like you know the Cowboys yeah. were predictable. <laughs> Oh, and I think looking at the off season too, and, and kind of in addition to what Dylan was talking about with losses, and what we've kind of talked about it's already through this conversation so far, and it seems like everyone's put Dak on the front on the headlines. There, he's been the the leader in the off season talk. I kind of feel like I know where you're gonna what you're gonna <clears throat> what your answer is gonna be. Um, but do you want him to lead the team, or do you and? Do you think that they're going to get a long-term deal done by July 15th? You know, I do. I do think they get a long-term deal done, and it will be a disappointment to, Mm -hmm. you know, probably about 45 50% of Cowboys fans that don't support Dak Prescott. Mm -hmm. I mean, everybody wants to say, oh, well, look at the stats. He's just as good as Tom Brady. He's just as good as Aaron Rodgers. (laughs) Stats aren't everything. Let's look at the eye test. You know what I mean? Let's 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 talk about how he didn't he couldn't beat a playoff team last year. So if we make it to the playoffs, how the hell do we expect to beat a playoff team mm-hmm. in the playoffs? Um the guy can't push the ball downfield. Like I, there's so many games last season where he overthrew Michael Gallup and Omari Cooper going down the sideline that left points on the table last season. Mm-hmm. No, and you know those are those were games where that were decided by a touchdown or a field goal. You know, if right. he makes those plays, who knows? Are the Cowboys twelve and four, thirteen and three last season? We don't know. But the point is, is Dak can't make those make those plays. He's shown mm-hmm. that his rookie season, he's shown it his sophomore, and he showed it last season. So, what makes me think that he's going to be able to do it? This season, what what magic or miracle is going to happen during the off season that you're all, all of a sudden going to be able to drop a dime, you know, 20, 30, 40 yards mm-hmm. down the field and everybody, the, their stats are skewed, right? Right. A lot of Dak Prescott's yards are from Zeke's yard after mm-hmm. catch, yep. Mark Cooper's yard after catch and Michael Gallup's yard after catch. Mm-hmm. Right? Because Dak Prescott is a dink and dunk quarterback. He's a game manager. He's a bus driver. Cowboys need more than a bus driver to win the Super Bowl. We have all the pieces in place, right. and especially getting drafting C.D. Lamb. The dude mm-hmm. is going to be amazing. Yeah, you, know, you got Cooper, and I think Gallup is finally – I think Gallup is – I think Gallup's an underrated receiver. I think a mm-hmm. lot of people overlook yeah. Um, he's definitely a deep threat. We saw it all season last last year, him getting wide open, going, you know, running that fly route. And now you have C.D. Lamb. I think you put Amari Cooper and Gallup on the outside, and you put C.D. Lamb as a slot receiver, and holy shit. Oh, man. Yeah, and that's that's why some of the people that love the Cowboys and refuse to quit on them are giving them a – record of like 13 and 3, 12 and 4 because they see the potential but like we keep saying Dak is obviously the issue and you brought up him overthrowing receivers all the time the the game I always go back to because it was it was the it was the end of their season was when they played the Eagles yeah week 16 or 17 whatever it was 
And there was multiple plays where he overthrew wide receivers that beat Eagles defenders by five yards. And the ball just was too far. And I, I go back to that because some of those plays are engraved in my memory because my parents are Eagles fans, so I normally mm-hmm. I normally root for them. I kind of watch their games. And I have some of those plays where just if he puts that ball in his arms, the game's over and the Cowboys win. But, yeah, that that those are the situations that Dak put uh, the Cowboys in that he couldn't get them out of, and they yeah, take a I lot mean, of L's for it. There's a reason why he went and he fell all the way down to the fourth round. There's a reason yes. for that. You know what yeah. I mean? You You – you get lucky every once in a while to get a quarterback that's drafted in the fourth, fifth, or undrafted. That Maybe is actually, in a third round, like Russell Wilson. Yeah, or a third round, like <laughs> Russell Wilson. You know what I mean? We did a top ten on uh, top ten quarterbacks last night on the show. I saw I have, that. I have Russell Wilson as top quarterback in the league. Let's go. Um, I don't know if I agree with that. I think Patty's better, but still, yeah. <laughs> Well, when I was looking at it, I looked at the body of work. You know what I mean? Right, he, yeah. Patty Mahomes has has people around him that can actually, you know, he's got Tyreek Hill. And don't get me wrong, I'm not taking any, anything away from Tyler Lockett, but I do think Tyreek Hill is a better route runner, and he's a hell of a lot faster than, than Lock, Lockett. But with Russell Wilson, he's that quarterback that will grind it out, and if you need him to go win the game, Russell Wilson will go win the game. Patty Mahomes, I still think he's still young and he still needs he still needs help to win games. We saw that in the Super Bowls. Defense yeah. needed help him. So that's why I had Russell Wilson as number one. But back to the Cowboys. Well, I, I appreciate um, that. <laughs> back to the Cowboys. Yeah, I I do think a deal will get done. I mean, history always shows us that Jerry Jones makes bonehead moves um and overpaying for people. Um, I'm a huge fan of Tony Romo. I think Tony Romo is probably one of the best uh, Dallas Cowboy quarterbacks, if not the best Dallas Cowboy, Cowboys quarterback in history. But I do think we overpaid him. The you know the hundred and something million dollars that we paid him, I don't think he was worth it right then. You know, we didn't win. We haven't won playoff games. You haven't been to a championship. So, in my opinion, you're not worth that money. Same with Dak. Like you've only won two playoff games, and now you know, coming off of a contract year, you can't beat playoff teams in the regular season. I'm sorry. You're just not worth $35 million a year. You're not. So right. his best bet is, you know, in my opinion, sign that franchise, sign that franchise tag, go out and prove that you can be the man, go out and be that quarterback. But until then you're, you're a second-rate quarterback. You're a backup at best. Name another team in the league besides maybe a few, but who else is going to give him $35, $45 million a season? Maybe someone that's desperate, but I don't think there's anyone that desperate. <laughs> yeah, I don't think there's a whole lot of desperate teams. I mean, I think teams would, would sign Cam Newton over Dak Prescott. There's a lot of hidden potential maybe if Cam Newton's healthy, but we've yeah. seen Dak for three years in a row and really not progress. We saw Cam Newton at his height. If he's healthy and can get back to it, people would pay for that. But like you're saying, people don't want to pay for a quarterback who's been average at best. Yeah. We like I, I, me as a Cowboys fan at the quarterback position since Tony Romo, I'm just, you know, for the past four years, it's, it's been mediocre. I'm, I'm tired of mediocre. Like I'm starting to question, like, damn, am I ever going to see the Cowboys go to the Super Bowl in my lifetime again? You know what I mean? Because it's mm-hmm. been since 96. I was like 14, 15, 16 years old when when last time we went to Super Bowl. And I'm, here I am, 37 years old. And well, as a Seahawks fan, I had to wait a long time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, but with the Seahawks uh, every year, like – this year, they're Super Bowl contenders. Next year, they're oh, going to yeah. be – as long as they have – Russell, Russell Wilson, Wilson changed my life. <laughs> yeah, as long as Russell Wilson's at the helm. You know, there's only a couple quarterbacks in the league that I believe that are worth that elite pay, and it's like Russell Wilson, Patrick Mahomes, Drew Brees, Tom Brady. One more quick commercial break, and we will be right back with On and Off the Field with Durf and Dylan. Uh, Aaron Rodgers for sure. That's probably about it. Maybe Deshaun Watson, depending on how he does this season. 
Mm-hmm. I really want to see how he does compared to without uh, DeAndre Hopkins, right? Because you always want to see the quarterback makes a receiver, not the receiver makes a quarterback. Right. Yeah. That'll be a, a tall tale. Uh, it'll be a, a, an interesting season for Deshaun to see if he gets that that bag or not. See if Bill O'Brien makes another boneheaded mistake. We'll see what <laughs> this will be an interesting night uh, off season for Bill as well. But yeah. we actually have to wrap up for the Cowboys. And you know, normally I would ask what your predictions are for next season, but I think we, I think we cap that pretty well with uh, we're both. I think we're all in the realm of <laughs> yeah. eight and eight at best. So uh, we're, we will do a game by game prediction on Thursday's live show from seven thirty to eight thirty. So. You want to tune in for that before your show kicks off? We'd love to have you for your opinion on that. For sure. Um, but yeah, so we'll yeah. see you then. And uh, yeah, just for clicks podcast with Michael LeBlanc and Michael Buckeister. Yeah. yeah, Mike and Mike in the afternoon. Appreciate you having me on, guys. Yeah. Hey, thanks, thanks for, for coming on. on. All right, fellas. Oh. <laughs> It's always you don't you never know when to cut it. You never know when to cut it. All right, there was a gap there. Oh shit. Uh, oh well, we'll we'll figure that out. We'll edit that maybe. Yeah, Sorry, okay. <laughs> figure that out. All right, but uh, we uh, yeah. Thanks for him coming on. That was great for the Cowboys. Yeah, I, I would. I, you never know what kind of Cowboys fan you're going to get, whether you're going to have to talk right. the guy off the ledge, you know, mm. that, and we're going 13 and three every year. Well, probably not, but you know, you never really know if you're going to get that guy or a guy like Michael, who's right. a little bit more down to earth. Mm-hmm. But our next guests are ready to roll. Nice. Uh, I think we have Eagles and Giants fan two or two at once. This oh, is going to get crazy. I don't think we've ever done two at once here on on and off the field. So this is going to get hopefully not too out of hand. <laughs> We're going to see what happens. But we have – let me throw, I'm going to throw up everything on the screen at once. If you're watching on YouTube at some point, everything's going up. Hey, guys, we have What's Adam. Going we, uh, I'm going to try and say your names. Adam Nutter and Blaze Gagekas. Oh, pretty good, dude. That, that was, was pretty, pretty good. good. Yeah. Was it good? It good. Right. Yeah, it's Guy Gekas, but you're you're right oh, on the Gekas. door. Oh, okay. oh yeah. so close. You had to tell him and he closed the door. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Yeah. We have them from Slapstick Sports Podcast and the Nerds with Words Podcast. So, two guys that know what they're doing, and we are very excited to have you on the show. Thank Same, you for man. having us. Thanks for yeah. having us, man. Yeah. Are you guys ready for two very loudmouth, uh, brash comics ready to talk <laughs> serious shit to each other? <laughs> Dude, I'm trying to keep it like, ready for cool. anything in my life. Yeah. <laughs> well, here's the problem: is like we're really good friends in real life. You know, we see each other wow. again. Usually, when uh, you know quarantine isn't ruining life, mm-hmm. we yeah. see each other like almost every day doing you know stand up together yeah, or podcast together. So we're usually arguing about some sport, <laughs> yeah. but, uh, you know, I'm, me being from New York originally and him being from right outside of Philly, you know, his whole life, we got that constant yeah. <laughs> yeah. NFC East clash going on. That's and always been I, the NFC East thing. Yeah. My least favorite team in the division is the Giants. That's yeah. not true. We said the Cowboys. I just times. say that to cool you all. <laughs> I hate the Giants. That's because not true. Of proximity, dude. We hate the Cowboys more. We all agree, and then I hate the Eagles. Like, the Redskins don't really matter to me. Yeah, yeah the, Redskins they're doing their own thing. <laughs> yeah. So just to just to clear it up for people not on YouTube, Adam is our Giants fan, and Blaze is our uh, resident Eagles. Philadelphia yeah. Eagles fan, and we have so many questions here. I, well, we're going to just kind of start out with the Giants real quick. We're, we're going to cover both the uh, previous seasons for both teams here, but for the mm-hmm. Giants, I don't know what expectations were. I mean, it was D- Danny Dimes comes in. Yeah. Who's this kid? What happened? Saquon's still a beast. The team's a little bit in shambles. I mean, did they meet expectations? Was it worse than you expected? How did that kind of go? <sighs> wow. Um, I hate... I hate 
Gettleman so much. I was like, why couldn't cancer win? You know, one time. Uh, I really was hoping for anybody else <laughs> to do that job. Oh. But no, he, he fires everybody, yeah. and then he's never like, maybe I'm the problem. It's like, he's the worst. He's the worst GM. But aside from him being a worst, the worst GM, listen, Eli had to go. I, I like how, how Jones comes in. I mean, we, Blaze and I talked about it before. He's, he's looking good. He's a good young he kid. He can play. He could play. Yeah. He, he, could, he, could, he could move. He's, mm-hmm. he's agile. Like, let's be honest. We had 15 years of a fucking pillar of salt statue playing quarterback for the Giants. <laughs> you know? yeah. And now you, now you got this kid. Nice like, change running, of pace. Yeah, he's like, running down the field, making like on-the-throw runs. I'm like, what the fuck? It's like, it's like what's going on? So, <laughs> this uh, is like the Giants? <laughs> yeah. And then Saquon, one of the best running backs in the NFL? The best. Oh, I know, yeah, but yeah. if I if I say that, you guys would be like, "You're biased." So I have to no, say he's one of the, the best, best. <laughs> overall running back. I agree, he's the best overall running back in the NFL. Um, we and then like you know, you look at our receivers, Evan Engram, who's essentially more of a slot receiver than a tight end. You know, he's solid <laughs> though. He stays healthy. He's good. Um, you know, I, I have hope. The thing we need to work on our O line, which they kind of did in the draft a little bit, and uh, the linebackers are garbage. So, you know, they get, those are two big things that need to build up. But it comes down to, like, new coach, new offensive, new OC. I don't know, man. I mean, last year I would say it was actually – I was a little disappointed, I think, because mo- there were more injuries than we anticipated. Mm-hmm. Like, Saquon got mm-hmm. hurt, Engram got hurt, and, and Jones had no blocking, and then no one to throw the ball to. Because <laughs> then also Shepard got hurt too. Like, everyone was hurt. So mm-hmm. I could, you could, it wasn't really fair to be like, well, the Giants – it's like, yeah, they suck, but, like, eh. I think they have a shot of going – Eight and eight this year, nine and nine and seven, maybe. I agree. If 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 they stay healthy, if Saquon goes down, fucking four and four, four, and, four, four, four and sixty, whatever, you know, four <laughs> and whatever. But like, yeah, it, it'll be rough. But they need everyone to be healthy. I would say like nine and seven, eight and eight's fair. Yeah, I would agree. Uh, and I think that it, the weird thing with the Giants, from the Eagles' perspective, I guess, is that I felt like that they were like one or two players away from actually competing. And then they just sold the farm, which didn't mm-hmm. make sense to me. I've, mm-hmm. you know, they like letting Landon Collins go. I, I don't understand how you could, do you, that. Let, you let, you let, let, you let one of the best safeties in the NFL go. You let Beckham yeah. go, which what the fuck. Yeah. <laughs> and, then, yeah. and then, uh, you're already being a bad team. And then you cut Janoris Jenkins, a very good cornerback. One of the, but it's not like cornerbacks are easy to come by in the NFL. He's one of the one. best. Yeah, he's one of the best defense defensive cover uh, defensive coverage co- uh, cornerbacks in the NFL. And then he called someone retarded on Twitter, which fine, okay, but maybe don't cut him. Maybe find him a bunch or like yeah, reprimand yeah. him, make him do public something. Yeah, like, go don't to class. Cut the guy. You're not. You're not positioned to cut the guy. <laughs> like, what they should have just put him in special ed classes. Yeah, and like see, they're, <laughs> yeah. they're like us, but yeah. <laughs> they're yeah, nice guys. There's no need yeah, for that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So yeah, that was but that's Gettleman, like be, bad, bad GM, <laughs> making bad moves, saving face before anything else. But yeah, it's kind of the same same realm of the question for the Eagles. Then um, it, it always seems like expectations might be high for that team since they are what just recently won a Super Bowl. Carson Wentz seems to be this really nice, athletic kid who can throw a ball, but injury prone. But I, I guess uh, Adam kind of also hit it with the Giants. Same thing with the Eagles. Name a game is injuries, obviously. Just yeah, decimated I mean, constantly. Uh, so. the la- last season, actually, at the beginning of that season, I don't think I've ever experienced expectations higher than, than the beginning of last season. We just we were like, you know, 15 and 1, Super Bowl, here we come. Mm-hmm. And I, I think that we, we had a strong case because we, we had the most complete team in the NFC, I would say. Um, not the best, but the most complete, you know, there's better defenses, there's better offenses, but we have really good of both worlds. You know, like I know you're a Seahawks fan. Russell Wilson's got to run for his life. Carson Wentz didn't really have to do that. He, he has one of the best offensive lines if they're healthy, you know, and then people just mm-hmm. started dropping. We, we started pulling people out of the stands. Who's this guy? Then I see him in. I've never in seen like anything the, like it with that yeah, team, the, man. Yeah, just yeah, the crazy. League, and they still, you know. They're they're right on the doorstep. Um, so in Philly this season, the expectations have come down a little bit, but anything else besides a playoff appearance is a complete waste of a season. Oh, and sixteen, I expect nothing more. You know, <laughs> <what> I <laughs> well, I mean, uh, uh, you know, they made a big. 
Yeah, they, yeah, you guys think it's okay. One thing yeah, that I'm I find sorry, concerning is that they let Malcolm Jenkins walk. Uh, and Philly, you know, with the whole Brian Dawkins, you know, debacle. And then we had Sean Considine and Quentin McKell and all these bums, you know, and it took us forever to finally get a good leading safety who could play the position well. And Malcolm Jenkins is one of the most versatile players on defense in the NFL. He's like uh, Charles Woodson or, you know, he's like one of those mm-hmm. guys play across and they just let him walk. And then they decide to put Jalen Mills, who's our best, I guess, red zone corner. He's the most physical at the safety position. It's just, it's concerning that that to me as a whole at this point where there wasn't one before, you know, also receivers, you know? Yeah, but I, I'm, we actually feel pretty good about the receivers at this point. I mean, obviously, everyone's pissed that they picked Jalen Rager. I don't know why, because speed is what we need. You know, we need a. Well, well, there so was we better. Got, there were just better. I mean, better. Uh, I guess no, by the numbers, options out there on the yeah. boards, like well, uh, C, uh, not C, uh, J- uh, Jefferson, right from yeah. LSU. Like he was out, and he I was they, he was the pick before. Uh, he should have been. He would, but he's more of like an Alshon Jeffrey type. He's, he's physical. What we need is speed. They just basically they got Deshaun Jackson coming back. They picked up Goodwin. They just tried to get a bunch of speed because that's our problem is stretching the field, and it mm-hmm. makes Carson Wentz's job impossible. And then everyone gets pissed at him that he throws to Ertz every play, but Ertz catches every ball. So you know, Philly fans, yeah. they're they're yeah. dumb, dude. They don't. Well, know. yeah, no, no, you guys are pieces of shit. We all know that. But <laughs> <laughs> the thing with Ertz is like he catches the ball and just goes down. There's no yeah. after the ball movement with him. That's true, but he is guaranteed to catch the yeah, ball, yeah, yeah, even if sure. it's for two yards. He's coming down with it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, definitely. And I think you mentioned here about speed for the Eagles too. It's like this off season they really did, like you said, mentioned they're going a lot about speed, trading for Goodwin. You had Deshaun Jackson coming back. They go and get Jalen Rager for speed, and they're. Like, it seems like they're try- the Eagles are trying to do. The track team style that the Chiefs are that they're kind of like the route the Chiefs are going right now. Um, it the NFL is always going to be a copycat league. Once someone does it, everyone else is going to try and do it again. Uh, do you see the Eagles kind of going that same route, trying to use that speed as their advantage with Carson Wentz? And I, I would say that uh, Andy Reid copied his team from the Eagles. Because we had oh, Deshaun yeah. Jackson, Jeremy Macklin, LaShawn McCoy, all those dudes were fast. Mm-hmm. You know, so I really think that he was probably the one who invented it. So it only makes sense. Well, not invented it, but, you know, mm-hmm. he revolutionized it in this era. But uh, it would ma- only make sense that he would do it in Kansas City. So, uh, yeah, I think that um, that's the best way to win probably now. It's a passing league. You need You need those safeties to drop back, you know. Mm-hmm. And if they come in. You hit them over the top, that pulls them back, then you can run the ball. Speed is always something that can set up everything if you have fast receivers. Right. They don't even need to catch the ball. They just need mm-hmm. to be able to fly. Yeah, right. That's yeah. why having Beckham was so great because it's like no matter what, they're doubling him. Yeah, And then that exactly. opens up the field for everybody else. And then eventually they're going to stop doubling him, and then he's going to break one open. Now we don't mm-hmm. have that. As a, you know, The Giants don't have anybody like that. Right. I mean, Eagles don't either. I mean, a very few teams do. But, I mean, look That's, at the Browns. You'd think the Browns would have been fucking way better. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there's your you know? big disappointment of the Yeah, of I was so season. mad because, like, I like all those guys. Like, I love Baker Mayfield attitude. So do I. Like, I love that, like, fuck you attitude from a quarterback. Yeah, I like that he's not a robot. He's yeah. Like- I yeah. like listen like that's what – like any product from the Giants is like that, like that very, like – Almost like that old school, like nineteen twenties, like good boy quarterback, and I hate it. Like Daniel Jones is like Eli Manning, like that. They're very much like boring. Like they're, Carson you know, Wentz is like that too. Drunk. Yeah, like, yeah, you're yeah. going to get drunk. He's like, I'm hunting. It's like you're, you're yeah. drunk, dude. What are you doing? Yeah, Eli just got Eli just got a Twitter. He's talking about fucking Frank's hot sauce. Like you know, it's yeah. like of course. Like, <laughs> so I, I, I'm like Mayfield's. Like I don't care about you. You know, he's like I don't care. He's like, you're not in yeah. the locker room. Fight me. I'm like, yes, yeah. that's what I wanted. I don't even care if you're losing. Like, I, dude, I just yeah, like that you attitude. Battle for that yeah, guy. exactly. Yeah. Like, that's what I like. Yeah, I'm we've talked over, about dude. that before <laughs> with sports these days, and especially with the Michael Jordan documentary that oh, came out. We it. talked. We talked a lot about how just the mentality back then was different. Like, especially without social media, you can say things to anyone. They held grudges. They showed it on the court. Everyone's a little bit. <laughs> Buddy, buddy, free, today. That's kind of what you see. Free agency is what did that. 
That also yeah, like yeah. Uh, a lot of the CBAs, the collective bargaining agreements, ruined yeah. stuff. But, uh, and everyone's uh, got the same agent. Shit. Right, it's like they all know it's, each other. Well, we we, yeah. we but Blaze, we literally talked about this in the last episode of Slapstick Sports about how like LeBron ruined like that that like when the all those guys team. in the NBA yeah. were yeah. like, we want to go win a ring together, and they're calling each other. I'm like, that's kind of fucking lame, right? Yeah, well, <laughs> I would want like, to. What are we doing by myself? If that's what it, yeah, if that's what it was, then that's what it is, dude. I would not. As we wrap up Eagles and Giants, I know we hit it a little bit, um, but. I guess just we'll wrap it up with next season predictions. I mean, where do you kind of stand in your, I, I don't know, the Giants. I don't know if you're going to keep expectations low. I know there's still some pieces missing. The Eagles, you said that they're, you're lowering them a little bit. Uh, they kind did of the middle Darius of the road Slay, schedule. Though, which is a huge Yeah, that's, that's a big, big addition. That for them. That's a bummer for us. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah um, I think the Giants, like I said, 9, 7, 8, and 8 is fair. I think they honestly lose the Eagles twice this year. <laughs> I think they split, probably. <laughs> I think they split Dallas, and they split Washington, and they lose to the Eagles twice. Okay. There was, like, five straight years where we swept the Giants in, like, the early 2000s. No, I remember. I yeah. was there for all that. Yeah, there. Wrong. Was yeah. <laughs> for the Eagles, I would say. Oh, real quick, uh, though. You know what we did get, though? Rings. Go on, though. You know. All right, you can make him leave now. <laughs> uh, for the Eagles, I would say um, ten and six would be a disappointment, but that's kind of where I'm seeing this team, uh, which is still a playoff bid. But uh, if everything goes right for the Eagles and they don't have the whole roster get injured again, I could see them being another thir- thirteen and three season and uh, making a real strong push for the Super Bowl again. Just as long as Wentz can stay healthy. I mean, they would have beat Seattle last year. If he played in that whole game, I disagree. I, I bet you they're an eleven and five or ten and sixteen. Okay. There's no way they're a thirteen and three team, even without injuries. I think that they are with with losing Jenkins and stuff. I don't know. Yeah, I mean Jenkins is a big hole, but I mean they do they did get Darius Slay, which is right. Huge. They, they got another corner. Ryan McLeod, they <laughs> yeah, the, the, but, uh, they got players, dude. And Avante Maddox is a rising bud that's going to turn into a rose, dude. I'm well, telling you, our players are out there shooting people. What are your players doing? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> we're, we're out there clapping. That's how you get <laughs> rings. You Gunpoint, dog. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're stealing we're other making, people's rings. Yeah. We're you stole two rings scared. from Tom Brady. Now you're taking people's rings from their own houses. <laughs> That's right. Uh, we That's appreciate you guys one. coming on. This was a blast. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. Yeah, we got you guys up on the wall for repeats, and I'm sure we'll be working together in the future. Oh, for I guarantee sure, it. Oh, so. we'll, get you, we'll get you guys on Slapstick soon. Yeah, hell yeah. No, yeah. Right. yeah, we'll do So, a if little, everyone little listening, little. make sure you go find Slapstick Sports with Adam Nutter and Blaze. G- oh, I already Dude, forgot. Dude, you it. had it so <laughs> close the first time, but you it's almost had it. Are you Jigekis. Is it Jigekis? Jigekis. Yeah. Oh gosh, I'm gonna do one of those things where you write the name down and like break Wait, it. Wait, you don't pieces. know who I am? I'm leaving. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, I'll do it for you. Thanks for joining, guys. Hell yeah, Bye. thank you. Yep. Uh, it's always interesting when you bring on two guys at once. That was a blast. Yeah, that was a blast. Yeah. yeah. We're gonna jump straight into the Redskins next. We got. Uh, let's hit the two buttons here at once. Yeah. Chris Paul. From the Couch Coach Podcast. What's going on, man? I love the hair. Yeah. Uh-oh. Oh, man. I don't have any, I don't have any audio from your side, Chris. Oh, you can't hear me. Oh, oh you can't hear me now? Yeah. yeah. There we go. Turn the on button on. That's, you know, how to go. Yeah, uh, man. How's everything easy going? Easy solution, at least. <laughs> oh, hey, we're, we're great. Oh, we're yeah. great. Tuesdays are always a good day for us. Get to talk some football and talk with some people. It's always a good day. Absolutely, absolutely. Glad to be here. Well, we're we're glad you are here. So, you know, we talked a little bit through Facebook. It's the Redskins. Yes. We all know who the Redskins are. Um they had one highlight last year from my side. They Dwayne Haskins winning his first NFL game and he misses the final snap because he's taking a selfie with a fan. Best yes. moment of the year from my opinion. I loved it. Yeah, I, from a fan's perspective, did you at least see what you wanted to see last year? Where I don't think expectations were met, but did you see anything that was <sighs> gave you hope for the future? I do see the I, I do see Dwayne is going to be okay. I seen that stretch in December where he was going against Green Bay. He did a pretty good job in the Green Bay game, 
and then fall it back up against Philly. I think he had a fairly decent game, and they had a shot to win that game as well. And then even in the game he got hurt against the Giants in Week 16, you seen that, okay, he can put it together. Um, he wasn't – everything was against all odds. I mean, first of all, you know, no one in that coach staff really wanted him there. I mean, that's obvious. Mm-hmm. So, you know – it, to me, he was playing with a blank canvas, and I think he did fairly well. And he, of course, the other bright spots you see Terry McLaurin. Uh, mm-hmm. He was like a you know came out of nowhere, and it was weird because I was like, well, I always thought like Paris Campbell's like one of their best receivers out of Ohio State, you know, who plays for the Colts. I'm like, man, we should got Paris Campbell. I'm like, why did we get you know, you know, why did we get um, <laughs> Terry? But but yeah, but he did very well. Um, the wide receivers, they were surprisingly, I mean, they, they did what they were supposed to do in, in essence, where we didn't have, mm-hmm. of course, we didn't have a thousand yard, um, receiver, but we had some decent guys like a guy like, um, Kelvin Harmon. I think he was, you know, he showed some flashes, especially towards the end. Um, I mean, the team, even at three and 13, which I would have never thought a million years, the team was going to be three and 13, mm-hmm. to be honest with you, even as a, yeah. just even, even. Throwing out the bias, I didn't think this team was going to be that bad. I knew they were going to struggle offensively, mm-hmm. but I really didn't. I was really shocked, like how bad, like how they really struggled early on on the offense. Yeah, and I, I feel like kind of going back to what you said about last season. I feel like it's, I feel like they're kind of you're kind of getting that turnover a little bit with the Redskins. They're kind of getting that young talent coming in. They're they're, they're building something new here. Um. They kind of cleaned house a little bit for his coaching staff wise. Uh, they bring in Riverboat Ron, and I just think I think that's a great move for him to come to Washington. He, I think he had a lot of success in Carolina, and I just he's coming to, Red, to the Redskins to change the game for them. Do you think that he can really change this this team around? I think so. I think he. I think for some odd reason, I just think that he he has what it takes. Mm-hmm. He's not like well, the previous. Well, even in the previous regime with Jay Gruden, which you know he was pretty much his glorified offensive coordinator. He turned Andy Dalton to this <laughs> prolific Pro Bowl quarterback, and you you know you're thinking, okay, well that's really his. It was his calling card. Jay was okay, um, and even I look at even the Joe Gibbs, no, Joe, even Joe Gibbs, even dating back to Mike Shanahan, where they had some sort of success. Mm-hmm. It wasn't as the success that you would that you would have thought like multiple years of being successful. I really do think that Ron Rivera has has what it takes. I think he brings that toughness that we didn't that we haven't had since Shanahan. And you look at that standpoint where Jay Gruden they loved Jay Gruden, but Jay Gruden was like a was like a player's coach, and he was more so he really didn't show a lot of emotion. Mm-hmm. And I think you look at and I looked at those press conferences. And I'm thinking to myself, how in the hell can you come back on Monday and rally the troops and you're so nonchalant like Friday, I mean, not Friday, but on Sunday after the games, you're so nonchalant. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, there's no fire. There's no nothing. What are these guys coming to on Monday or, you know, if they're off on Monday, then when they come back on Wednesday, Mm -hmm. what what do they, what do they really get out of that? Do they, do they just, you know, take on the, you know, the leadership of Gruden and just, you know, just go around, just moseying around versus Ron Rivera. He's not going to play that no. at all. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think he showed that walking through the door. I, yeah, the, One absolutely. of the big things was he took the pool table out of the locker room or something, like first yeah. day he showed up. That's, yeah. that's the kind of mentality he has, and I love that in a coach person. Yeah. You, have to have some, you have to have that leadership factor, and I think Ron has it. He, he took a team to the Super Bowl. That's all you need yeah. to know. <laughs> so absolutely. He definitely has the potential, and we talked about the Eagles kind of copying the Chiefs a little bit in the last segment, and I kind of compare the Redskins maybe heading towards a 49ers direction. You know, they take Chase Young with their uh, the second overall pick to build on an already very powerful pass rush. And the defense I don't think is really that much of an issue. You might have a couple holes in the secondary, but the Redskins have a great front seven. And then you mm-hmm. take you know Antonio Gibson in the third round, mm-hmm. build into that running backfield, you know, Run first, strong defense. Is that kind of what you're seeing them try to build there? 
Yeah, and I think that's what you really have to do. And that's why, and it's funny, because I always said we were San Francisco Junior with Fort <laughs> Nana, where we in this and you, and I'm glad you brought up that point because now you're seeing that brick by brick type of you know how you're supposed to build a team in San Francisco. <laughs> Is a poster child how you're supposed to build a team. Like you said, you build up you build up your infrastructure, you build your lines, your offensive, defensive lines. You run the ball, you get a quarterback that doesn't make mistakes, mm-hmm. or as as or as a perfect game manager. And I, I do see that's where you and I think I do I'm hoping that we're in that trajectory because I think that's the only way for you to re- to build a football team, to be honest. And, like, everybody else wants to reinvent the wheel and do mm-hmm. all that stuff. But we know at the end of the day, the teams who do those brick-by-brick brick fundamental things, they're, they're successful. Not saying that they can always win Super Bowls, but they're successful. Like, right. I can see San Francisco winning double-digit wins for the next, I would say, about the next three to five years, mm-hmm. just on the strength of that. So – Kind of leading to that, kind of seeing that future outlook there. I mean, how do you, after going three and thirteen last year, and the amount of things that the Redskins organization organization has done this year, uh, how do you, how are you feeling for this upcoming season coming up? And like, kind of, what are your predictions for that season? I think with with as as a Skins fan, I think, and I can speak to most of them. I think we really, really have to be patient. Mm-hmm. You, we got to really think about the situation. We got to think about as, ourselves as the 2011 Carolina Panthers, who you know mm-hmm. who came to points where they were rock bottom. They bought in Riverboat Run, and I don't even remember a scenario when Carolina lost to Buffalo by like a point. It's like in 2013, and I remember everybody was like, "Oh, you got to fire Ron Rivera, fire Ron Rivera," and then he turned it back around and they ended up winning that division mm-hmm. that same year. And I'm telling you, I have a feeling that this could potentially happen in maybe year one or year two where guys is going to get to a point where that, not guys, but more so the fans are mm-hmm. going to get to a point where, oh, we just got to get rid of them. It's, it's, not, it's not a quick turnaround. I think we just have to be patient. Next year is going to be interesting. I think the stretch that I'm really, really looking forward to is pretty much our Thanksgiving to pretty much the Monday, the Sunday before Christmas I'm from with November 26th to mm-hmm. December the 20th. So we go to we go to Dallas, of course, on Thanksgiving. Yeah. We go to Pittsburgh. Then we go to Santa Clara. And then we come home and play Seattle. So that's gonna be the really the the biggest barometer for me. I don't think this team is gonna make the playoffs, mm-hmm. to be honest with you. But those four games are gonna be telling because those are games where guys we still might be in the hunt. Thanksgiving, it it could be an extreme possibility. Mm-hmm. But these are going to be the games that your back's going to be against the wall. You're going against teams who, if we look at it now on May 26, are going to be playoff teams for the most part. Mm-hmm. So what do you do against those guys? What type of film are you going to produce in the, in that four game stretch? And will and that's going to think and that's going to turn that's going to carry over in 2021. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, Redskins are definitely a team that you're. Like, you said it perfectly. You're not really looking at next season. You might look for those highlights yeah. of next season, see what this mm-hmm. team can produce. Yeah, but give it another two, maybe at the worst three years, you got a team that yeah, great comparison with even the Forty ers too. Still, where they were in the dumps and they yeah. turned around. The Panthers, yep. I think the Panthers is perfect because Riverboat Ron's the one that turned them around. Yeah, can he do it again? With the forty not or with with the Redskins, <laughs> right? You know, I, I think that's a lot of great points, and you know, maybe I can't wait to bring you back to talk about them more. It's, uh, I can't wait to see if they do succeed this year. Mm-hmm, you right. got your name there on the wall. I can't wait yeah. to, to talk to you again. Yeah. Uh, if you want to let us know where we can find your podcast, yes, um, found it just about everywhere. Couch Coach Live, um, Apple Podcast, Spotify, also the website CouchCoachLive dot com. Yeah. All right. Nice. It's Perfect. also social media as well. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Couch okay. Coach Live. Nice. Outstanding. Well, yes. thank you again for coming on, and we can't wait to talk to you in the future. Absolutely. Looking forward to it. Definitely. Uh, another. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, that was just. Oh, wow. That was 
four amazing guests. Yeah, it was a, a great show. This is this is going to go down in the history as like uh, one of our top on and off the field episodes. I think. Yeah, I think so. I I can't wait <laughs> to listen back. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone that's listening to this right now, thank you for listening. Yeah, go to thank YouTube. You. Thanks for watching. Yeah. Um, make sure you subscribe to everything. Make sure you share everything, like everything, whatever button there is to make sure you follow us when new content comes out and you know it's there. Make sure you click that button. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And as we wrap up this show with PFF coming out saying that this guy was the highest graded rookie quarterback last season. All hail the Jack Strap King. <laughs>